I wanted to show what it's like for somebody in a, an abusive situation trying to find help when they live in a rural county, especially out in rural Wisconsin. So I'm going to Google and I'm going to type in domestic abuse Juneau County, that's the county I live in, Wisconsin. Not a heck shows up. Um, the first one is a resource guide for families. And that, that's something that has all the resources for supposedly the entire area, but really a lot of those resources are non-existent. They don't have funding or they're outside of Juneau County. The next one is Hope House. Hope House is supposed to be our domestic violence, sexual assault place to go for this county. They receive funding from the state and I think federal too, don't quote me on that, but um, and they handle South Central Wisconsin, so that means five counties. They are located in Baraboo, which is over 33 miles from where I live in Mauston. So like say if you were from Nesita, add another 20 miles on that. Um, other parts like maybe Camp Douglas, you can add another 15, 16 miles on it. And so it kind of, while I, I'm not discounting the work they do, it kind of leaves us out here in Juneau County, which is very rural, more rural than Sauk County where they're from, um, in no man's land. There's, there's not a lot of places to go. Uh, in the past, I, I've had to call Hope House when I was going through what I was going through with my ex-husband. And... Um, it wasn't, it just wasn't, the, the programs they have, while they're good, it didn't fit my situation. So I wasn't able really to receive a lot of help from them. So, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's it for domestic violence help and sexual assault help in our county. Um, when you go to the resource guide, just to give you another example, hopefully it loads quickly. Uh, which is great. There's a resource guide here. Sexual assault, domestic abuse are, are towards the beginning. So they list the family center that's in the Wisconsin Rapids. Completely, again, another county and quite frankly very far. They have Hope House. They have passages, which I've used passages in the past for people I've helped, women I've helped, because I found that their advocates are, are older, you know, um, they're more like my age, <laughs> in their 40s and 50s, and sometimes for women going through it at those ages, working with someone older and more experienced can be a little bit better, a little bit more reassuring when you're going through it. But again... They are in Richland County. They are in another county the opposite way. Juneau County Department of Human Services. Um, they're overwhelmed. They're overworked. They've gone through budget cuts. Not a lot that they can offer, especially for situations like this. I mean, I, I have Circle of Hope, which started out as Lend a Hand, and we help the no-income, low-income of Juneau County. We started in 2009. What we do is we try to place them in motels if they become homeless. Work with a lot of domestic violence issues. Um, work with a lot of women leaving, leaving bad situations. And almost always, they're given our number at <laughs> Circle of Hope from these resources like Human Services and Hope House and Passages, they actually refer back to us so we could place some places and it's just not an ideal situation when you live, ah, here we go, Circle of Hope. Um, it's not an ideal situation. It really isn't. Juneau County Housing Authority, waiting list. Mauston Housing Authority, waiting list. Mauston City Cab is actually listed as a miscellaneous um, resource for abuse, assault, and suicide. Wow. Um, that's because it's the only cab in all of Juneau County. We have no public transportation. 
out here. So I, I'm not really sure where the cab, what resource the cab is supposed to take them to. That's interesting. Um, Salvation Army. Mm. They're, they're also overran. Um, and, and you can call them up. Sometimes they'll give out gas cards or whatnot, but it's ran by um, a very sweet older couple from their home. They, they handle a lot of the calls. So, this is this is it. This is what we face. And while their resources on print, in reality, they just don't come together. They don't feel the safety net. And, and I really wish they did, but they don't. And that's one of the largest issues of rural America when you're in an abusive situation trying to leave trying to leave, trying to break through, trying to get help. It's just everything works against you. I know when I was looking to, at leaving my husband, I was a single, I, mean, I was that stay-at-home mom and I had no job at the time. I, I called Help House because I thought, you know, maybe there's a job program. Maybe they can help me find a job because that's what I needed. That's really what I needed to be able to, to build my life up where I could leave and, and support my children. And at the time, I was still, no, there's nothing like that. We don't do anything like that. Um, call Workforce Connections. Call this. Call that. So what ends up happening is a lot of these times you go to these resources, they push you off on other resources. And by the time you make that second, third, fourth, fifth phone call, if you get through to someone or if not, if you don't get your messages returned, you're tired. And you were already tired when you started making those calls. So... It's kind of sad what we have to face. Um, okay, so now you got to see what it's like when you search out. And I can tell you honestly, you call these numbers, you know, Wisconsin Rapids, they'll probably tell you you have to come out there. Hope House sometimes will send an advocate out to you. Or they'll tell you you have to come to their program there to take part in the emergency shelter if they have any openings. Or you'll have to, for counseling, you'll have to go there. Um, passages has been pretty good. I mean, I, I, I do have a soft spot for them because they, they've, they, they've come to the rescue of a few people I've helped at, at really had bad situations. But again, you know, Hope House and Passages, there's only so much they can do. They are outside of this county. So if I'm a woman looking for something right now, I need to go somewhere right now and talk to someone. I'm kind of left out in the cold. Um, they're kind of left out in the cold. There's really not a lot here. All these numbers like Red Cross, Salvation Army. I mean, look at that. We get Social Security as a resource. Great, granted, yeah, maybe if you need it, but um, doesn't really kind of help the situation. Um, Circle of Hope, I'm glad we're listed, but wow, you know, we operate solely on private donations, and it's rough. We, we you know, we can't always meet all the needs. Um, we're kind of alone out there doing that emergency shelter crisis in this county. And we go through the money like water, especially when it comes to the season coming up. We got the cold weather season, which means it's also the drinking and partying season, which also means there's going to be some domestic violence calls. And a lot of the people we end up helping are, are women and children fleeing that, that situation. And they want to stay close enough to some support system. So that's why they don't want to go to, like, say, the shelters for domestic violence in other counties. And quite frankly, I can't blame them because I was there. That's not where I wanted to go. When you're when you're spinning out of control, you don't always think clearly, um, and you just you want to hold on to something. And having to walk away completely from anything and everything that supported you is, is, is not an easy task. So, um, they're really, we really as a country need to look at the situation because this isn't right. I mean, it just, it isn't, there's not much out there. So next I'm going to turn off this camera 
and then take you for a little ride to show you just how isolated of an era, area rural America is. Okay, we're about ready to get in the car. We're gonna go. This is the car I'm taking. <laughs> it's actually one of the better cars I've owned since I've been out on my own. So if you hear a lot of noises, you'll know what's doing it. Okay, in an effort to show just how rural it is, I just pulled out of my driveway. I live in town. I actually live in the big city of the county, Boston, the county seat. And so now I'm going to show you how far, or really how little, I have to drive to reach cornfields and nothingness. Okay? Remember, I live smack dab in the middle of Boston, the big city of Juneau County. Um, we're just over 4,000 people in population, maybe 42, 44, I'm not, not really 100% sure. Uh, we're going down a, a typical side street in Boston. Actually, this is, this, is, this is one of the larger side streets in Boston. It's a pretty little town. It's what <laughs> people like me, former Chicagoans, call quaint. You know, you come out here to live an idyllic life. Everything you've always dreamed about, you know, but then life happens and you realize that that quaintness of the real life, that sets the simplicity, can actually work against somebody who's trying to survive. Um, it, it can be a hard life. So here we're coming up to the beginning of nothingness, what I like to call. These are roads that really can isolate somebody going through, going through um, a bad situation. Over there is the schools. We got elementary, junior high, high school all together over there. And then we make this turn. Bam. Nothingness. You're out in the middle of nothingness. Now, as you can see, the sign is going to say the next town of Elroy is 11 miles. And that's 11 miles of curves, turns, hills, um, cornfields. Nothing. So imagine this in the wintertime. That's 11 miles to get to the county seat where all the resources, the little that we have, are located. And this is just one end of Boston. If I was to drive north out of Boston, Mesita would be the next town over. And I believe it's 17 miles. If I was to take you to the east side of Boston and drive out, it would say Linden Station, 11 miles. Um, and this uh, middle of Boston driving out, going to, well, I think it would be northwest would be um, New Lisbon. That one's a little bit shorter. It's like seven or eight miles. But again, imagine this is the middle of nowhere. No public transportation. We have some of this extreme weather from extremely hot in the summer to nothing in the winter. When I say nothing in the winter, I mean Nothing but ice, snow, and cold. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous weather. Not exactly the best time to be out on your own trying to make it. So, this is life in rural. Now, what I had you on before was a major, um, major road out here. Now, I, I just made a right-hand turn trying to head back to town a little bit. And this is a typical road. These are the roads that are everywhere out here. As you can see, there, there's nothing. Nothing. Well, there's a house. <laughs> there's a hill. But there's nothing. And this is just right outside of the county seat of Boston. I mean, we're, we're not far at all when it comes to driving. But imagine if you were walking. Imagine if somebody just beat you up or raped you. Your, your husband or something. And you were alone out here. Terrified. Um, maybe haven't had 
the best of luck in the past with turning them in or whatnot. So you don't trust the police or you don't trust human services. You're, you're in fear that you're going to get your children taken away. I mean, these are all the things that go through survivors' heads when they're victims. So, we're almost back to town. You can see cornfields, cornfields, cornfields. A few of the houses are getting a little bit closer. That could work for you. Sometimes that works against you, depending on what your neighbors think of you or what they assume is going on. said this is nothingness. So when you hear these survivors speak and tell their story on the When I Became Free, the Heartland Project, this is where they're living from. This is where they're coming from. You know, the Heartland of America. Shouldn't we be doing a little bit more for the people who help keep this country going? I mean, these farms. You know what I'm saying here? <laughs> I guess I'm kind of at a loss for words, but um, and I hope that I'm getting across the isolation that you feel. We already know victims feel isolated, but add on top of the geography like this, imagine the isolation there is. It's just, it's so overwhelming, just so overwhelming. So when they are able to break free and tell their stories, realize, my lord, they have walked through a battle zone like you have no idea. And you cannot imagine. I mean, seriously, you cannot imagine. Okay, we're starting to come back into town. You can tell. And again, there's no public transportation out here. It showed Mawson City Cab. Whoopee! You know, uh, where is it supposed to take you? But there's... You, Let's say if I lived in one of these places and I have managed to get a job to build myself up, but I didn't have a car, or my car breaks down, or, you know, quite frankly, when I first left, I had two cars in my driveway, but neither one of them worked and no money. So, and there's no public transportation. I mean, the barriers working against victims trying to become survivors is just insurmountable. And, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, so this is rural Juneau County. And actually, we're just right outside of the county seat. <laughs> just to give you an idea. I mean, it's a beautiful country. Absolutely gorgeous country. We got everything from um, lakes and valleys and hills. And hunting and fishing and skiing and boating. A lot of tourists from Minneapolis and Chicago come up here. That's I used to when I used to live down in Chicago. This was the area we would come up to. But okay, this stop sign will signify back into town. I'm gonna turn this off so this car up here doesn't take up. Okay, he's turning anyways. There's a the cemetery. This is the county building where all the resources are. That's over the jail and the sheriff's department and whatnot. Nice size building. Great that they have them all compiled into one area, but the thing is, most of the people working in that building are people you know when you live out here. They're your neighbors. They're your abuser's family. The people you go to church with, you usually don't want to run to them and tell them what's going on.